by definition, fumigation is a certain concentration for a certain period of time at a certain temperature. By definition, that kind of says we have to do some sealing to hold that concentration. And we'll get to that. I want to clear something up, and I commonly get it, but the difference between fumigation and fogging. So anyways, a fogging, by definition, is a liquid pesticide, usually measured in microns, that reaches the target pest as a liquid or a vapor, just to simplify it. Often and all too not do I get people saying, oh, you're going to be doing a fog. The raid generation has ruined the fumigation side with the, I will just bomb it. The expectations are completely different for fogging than for fumigation. A liquid pesticide reaching its target is like a three-dimensional spray. Whereas a fumigation is, like I said before, holding a specific concentration for a certain amount of time at a certain certain temperature and it reaches the pest in the gaseous state. The fogging has the ability uh, to, to use long wide areas, takes minimal sealing, very cheap, but you have to have the proper expectations with it. Fumigations usually cost more, have the ability to penetrate a commodity and, and take a lot more preparation. A uh, quick outline of what we're going to be talking about is sealing for a fumigation and the take home message for today is sealing is the single greatest impact on the economics of a fumigation, how much it's going to cost by your chemical cost if you have a leaky fumigation and have to keep going at it and dumping gas into it, cost is obviously going to come back up. And if anybody has gotten their uh, 2015 notifications from the chemical manufacturer, it's going to go up even more. <laughs> Ethics. You know, obviously if we keep dumping to it and we can't have that sustained concentration or a measurable concentration, we're not going to get the best fumigation. We'll also probably help to encourage some of the resistance stuff like we talked about early. Kind of coincides with effectiveness. And then also safety. Uh, we're talking about buffer zones and bystander safety. Uh, if you don't have a good tight seal, uh, drifting and, and those buffer zones could be increased. Why do we seal? I think it's pretty obvious. Um, what is the environmental impact on a fumigation? If we were fumigating this room right here, what would the weather do with it? Mechanical loss. Uh, how the temperatures inside of a facility affect our approach and how the gas behaves. Microenvironments, uh, ide identifying reinfestation risks, and also some ways to compensate or reduce the risk of gas loss. We see a lot of possible avenues for gas loss. This company has obviously made the investment. Usually they hire high school kids and give them a bucket of tar have them go around the base of the bin. The fans, you know, are used to control both the temperature and in some ways the moisture and quality of the grain inside. We have some legs, some avenues in which the gain, uh, grain is uh, removed or reclaimed from the bin. And then also even our own recirculation duct itself. If we don't stop the gas, you can obviously see how people at ground level could be affected and how the quality of the fumigation will be affected in the long run. Label defined requirements. We talked about re-registration earlier. We are seeing more and more verbiage as new products are being introduced, as new changes are being made. It is every safety person's responsibility to secretly one up the person that was there before him. So if five parts per million were tolerable before, it always seems like when the new label comes out, you're at one part per million now. Or if you're at 0.3, maybe one day you'll be at 0.1 parts per million. So we're seeing more and more of this influence that they kind of broadly say, this is what you should do, this is what you need to do. We covered that. Now, now go forth and, and do it. The single biggest influence and opportunity for gas loss and failure is a storm. That is actually my truck and me driving to a fumigation uh, to take gas readings. Uh, 
it is basically not only catastrophic failures of a seal, of a seal job or a vent or you know a, a wall that you put up blowing, but also the death by a thousand pinpricks. Uh, there's a wicking effect that goes on to these buildings. Um, uh, you can watch on higher winds the gas drop. So using your application point, um, we joke that uh, the get her done mentality from Larry the Cable Guy has been around for fumigators for a long, long time. We do not always have the option of when the plant is down and the facility is down to be able to alter our time of application. So we might need to also alter our ceiling. So maybe switch from sealing the entire building to tarping a commodity or moving it to a chamber. But all, you know, definitely in the long run using um, you know, more, more weather resistant sealing technique. Does anybody, does anybody hear about the Washington tornado that went through Illinois? kind of flattened the town, the whole town was in church and they didn't have any loss or very few loss. This was actually a fumigation that I had going on down, just down the road from it. Uh, we had sustained winds of over 100 miles an hour for 20 minutes and it, I mean, the guys that, our guys at SEAL are good, but 120 miles an hour, or 100 miles an hour for 20 minutes is a lot. Uh, so, like I said, catastrophic failure opportunity is there. 